Sometimes it, it really does feel like we need a revolution when we think about the challenges we face today. Debt crises, political stalemates, energy, the environment, the food we're feeding our families. But I don't think we should be discouraged. And today I'm going to talk about the story of Bright Farms, but I also want this to be an example. An example for us as leaders, as activists, and as citizens an example for how we can think about how some of our generation's greatest problems, greatest challenges, can be converted into a, some of our greatest business opportunities. I want to start by looking back a little bit. I want you to raise your hand if you were working in the food industry five years ago. Wow, a lot, more than half. We're going to need that experience. Five years ago, I wasn't. Five years ago, I was running a business that improved the supply chains of big retailers and their suppliers. I had a singular goal, which was to maximize the efficiencies of systems that brought goods to stores. And let me tell you, I am programmed to live, breathe, and yes, eat efficiency. I have a license plate that reads efficient. <laughs> it's true, I do. <clears throat> when I followed my passion and came into the food industry and dug into the produce supply chain. I encountered a system that was at odds, with it, at odds with itself. Our produce supply chain is incredibly efficient and inefficient all at the same time. First, here's how it's efficient. It produces huge quantities of food at low prices. And here's how it's inefficient. Our fresh produce holds up to travel great but it can't uphold taste at all. In fact, we grow produce for travel and not for eating. The system breeds foodborne illness and it's killing our environment. Our fresh produce supply chain is industrialized and centralized to the point that it's an enormous consumer of land, of water, of crude oil, and natural gas. The more I learned, the more I came to realize that for all the good intentions to feed the world, parts of our food supply chain aren't merely inefficient, they're toxic. If TED is about inspiration, well, I was inspired. I was inspired to rethink the produce supply chain. I was more than inspired. I was compelled to develop an alternative supply chain, one that eliminated these inefficiencies and that prioritized farmers quality food, our health, the environment, and still produced large quantities of food at low prices. I want to make a full stop here for a second. I want to ask each one of you to visualize the best tomato you've had in the last year. Do you have it? I want you to raise your hand if it came from a supermarket. <laughs> I can't believe that there's really zero. Although I'm not surprised that it would, it would have at least been close to zero. People typically visualize the tomato from farmer's markets, probably a lot of that, gardens, and restaurants. Virtually nobody, or perhaps in this case, literally nobody, says supermarkets. Even when I ask that question of supermarket executives. <laughs> I'm serious. The tomato I visualized was produced by a six-year-old my beautiful daughter, Amelia, in our kitchen garden. Amelia and I like to discuss how the most important ingredient in food is love. And how you find love in the food that someone grows or prepares for someone they care about personally. Amelia's tomato that I'm visualizing and the tomatoes she grows in the garden look a lot like this tomato. And the tomato I visualized was bursting with flavor. It was bursting with love. And this tomato sucks. <laughs> I'm serious. That tomato was awful. 
it was organic. It was expensive. We bought it at a fancy supermarket not far from here. So why does it lack taste? And nutrition too, by the way. They run together. And what does that tell us about the supermarket tomatoes and lettuces that we're buying and feeding to our families? These tomatoes are international travelers. They bounced here to New York from Mexico in a 53-foot truck. No wonder they suck. That's typical, by the way, for, for U.S. supermarket tomatoes in the winter. Did you know that nearly 100% of supermarket lettuces in the U.S. come from just two places, near Salinas, California in the summer and Yuma, Arizona in the winter? These lettuces traveled 3,000 miles to reach the local grocery store here. It's no surprise that lettuce is prone to rotting before it's purchased or right when people bring it home. This causes huge losses for supermarkets, and it makes my wife, who loves fresh baby spinach, unhappy, which makes me unhappy. <laughs> produce executives, produce buyers, they don't want this. They've actually got families of their own that they're feeding with produce, and they're good people. But they're not just good people, they're business people. They want to bring you quality produce, but they need to buy large quantities of produce at low prices. And right now, there's only one option for that, which is our industrialized and centralized food system. Incrementalism isn't going to do it. Moving food faster or better through this system isn't going to solve these problems. It's time for a revolution in the produce supply chain. Can you imagine a revolutionary new system that had fewer miles, fewer trucks, fewer tasteless tomatoes, that had less foodborne illness, less crude oil, and less rotting lettuces? Can you imagine a revolutionary supply chain where we went back to our roots and grew and sold produce in the same community by a farmer who, like Amelia, grew for taste instead of for travel, and maybe even with a little bit of love. Do you think that would be better? Do you think that would be better? Yes. Yeah. We think so at Bite Farms, too. And you know who else does? Produce buyers at supermarkets. They do, too. In fact, nearly 20% of the top 50 US supermarkets are already working with Bright Farms to try to make this revolutionary new system a reality. The industry is reacting with huge enthusiasm. Produce buyers sincerely want to bring great food at great prices to their customers. They just need a better option. So how is Bright Farms going to do this? What are we doing? How are we going to bring large quantities of food at low prices that's better quality and better for the environment? It sounds hard, but the answer is surprisingly simple. We're building greenhouse farms, but it's how we're building them and where we're building that matters. We're building them at supermarkets, on their roofs, at their distribution centers, and always in their communities. Bright Farms provides a turnkey solution. We finance it, we build it, we manage it for our supermarket clients in a way that cuts time, distance, and costs from the produce supply chain. We're building hydroponic recirculating greenhouses and recruiting farmers across the country to bring better produce to everybody. Here's how the deal works. We put up the money we build the facility, we find, we nurture, we support, we train the local farmer. The supermarket is required to put up zero investment. They merely commit to buying produce that's better. That's not enough, by the way. Zero investment and better produce on their own doesn't satisfy other requirements. There's another factor, which is the price. If we can't meet or beat current market pricing, this is going to remain a fringe initiative. And I'm not interested in the fringe. I'm interested in making a difference. But we can meet or beat existing prices. We do it by having a shorter and simpler supply chain. More than half the cost of this lettuce isn't the lettuce. It's the long and complex supply chain that gets it to your local grocery store. We simply operate without that long and complex supply chain. So we have lower operating costs in the traditional industry, we can sell at low enough prices to meet or beat current market prices. This is a case where less is truly more. So is our business model working? 
It is. We actually just recently announced the industry's first long-term produce agreement. It's with a great supermarket called McCaffrey's. We're building them a greenhouse at their store in Yardley, Pennsylvania. And I want all of you to go there and check it out. Jim McCaffrey, like many supermarket executives, cares deeply about his customers. He's not just a great businessman. He's a visionary as well. And he had the vision to commit to a revolutionary new system that's bringing better tomatoes and consistent, fantastic lettuces to his store shelves on the day that they're picked. And by the way, it's not just, we care about McCaffrey's customers as much as Jim does. We're not going to be anonymous 3,000 miles away. Our farmer won't be 3,000 miles away. He'll be three blocks away from this store. He'll be living, sending his kids to school, creating jobs, and growing produce in the same community as McCaffrey's customers and shopping in the same produce aisles right there with them. When we started earlier, I said that TED Talks were about inspiration. I've been inspired by many of you here today, and I thank you for it. And I hope I've had the chance to inspire some of you as well. Inspired you to not be discouraged by the problems you're facing or the supply chains in which you feel like you're stuck, but instead to think about these challenges as opportunities to start your own revolutions. And in our case, a revolutionary opportunity to bring our society produce that's safer, healthier, tastier, better for the environment, and bursting with the most important ingredient of all, love. Thank you.